you've got to know your people. That's why some of the worst sermons that you can ever preach are the first ones when you go to an appointment. Now let me give you some logistics um, that work for, for um, different styles. If you're a manuscript preacher, if you get a well-isolated and a, and a well-done uh, look at what keeps us from hearing the topic, then I hope you can, between a sentence or three, I hope you can say, this is what I really need to say. And if it is, that's not that hard to memorize, three sentences. So if you're a manuscript preacher, get that either a thoroughgoing image, like waiting in behind the truck, or a message that is your point today, get that into your sermon four or five times. And type it big if you're a manuscript preacher, and make sure that you hit it when you get there, and so that you can look up and say it, because you know it. If you're a manuscript preacher, the worst danger is you don't know it at all, and so you just keep reading. And a lot of people have really redundant reading styles. For example, their tone ends this. Every single sentence finishes with the same volume, and every single thing I say winds up with the same conclusion. And after a minute, please, you know, so if you're a manuscript preacher, find a way to get your head up and say that pivotal line or that pivotal image. It's like waiting to go to the bathroom. Or it's like driving when you're behind a slow truck. You don't need to look down at that moment. Practice. Put your finger on the point in the manuscript and look up and say, eh, here we go again. It's like driving behind that slow truck. Find an opportunity in your manuscript style, put your finger down, and have a line you can look into somebody's eyes with, instead of just, have a line you can look in somebody's eyes with. Okay? That's not looking in people's eyes. That's twitching. Okay? Well, and it's also nerves, too. Yeah. You know, when you get nervous, you want to go to, like, lots of the room, which is on the back. Right. I, I, I give you give you my my best example though of, of making it work. I was in Bolivia when I didn't speak hardly any Spanish. I mean, I probably knew 50, 70 Spanish words, and I get this life changing revelation, and it is still with me today. I share it in many settings. If you ask me, for example, if you called me and said, "Rod, can you arrange to come speak at my church?" Which, by the way, probably is not on Sunday, but that might have happened. But if I came. It's not unlikely if you gave me free reign that I would pick this topic. If it shaped my life, it changed everything, everything about my sense of call and what it is I give people in spiritual life. So, I get this thing. I'm like, yeah. And I go see this woman. I said, you know, I, 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 she's a pastor. I've had this life-changing experience. She said, wow, because you preach. Said, well, yeah, I can't, but I don't speak Spanish. She says, well, I can help you speak. Now, she said, no, really. I can help. I'm really kind of moved by your sermon. Well, how would we have a bad? And she says, here, I'll tell you what I'll do. I'll, uh, I'll help you. Give me your three basic ways of communicating. And I'll try and take notes. And so they had me preach and believe me. A guy with a 50 to 70 word Spanish vocabulary. But I had three lines. I read it a hundred times because that's all I had. And then when I get there to preach, I'm like, uh, this word good is you, thus. And God calls us to struggle and wrestle. And it's not always easy, but even the wrestling is good. Up, good, how, are, that. But the picture God gives us of, of the wrestling match with Jacob is the metaphor the whole Jewish community adopted for spirituality. We wrestle with God. It's not all sweet and light. It's struggle, and yet that is good. Then, for, why, but. Okay? And, and I... But what was amazing was I kept saying the three passages, or three sections she gave me in translation to it, and then I wove together whatever words I could, and it was a deeply moving experience, and the people were really uh, energized. 
I preached it twice, came up here and preached it in English. It was a lot more successful. But, <laughs> but it was like being a manuscript preacher. I had three lines that sang. And I hit them. Maybe each line I hit two or three times. And they sang. And manuscript preachers, let me tell you, you've got to get, you've got to ask yourself when you're done, what are my killer lines in this thing? Find three or one and underline it and go back and re-edit and put it in five times. And be good at saying it and be able to look up and, and in whatever your style is, underline it by your stuff. Okay? That good for manuscripts, and that's good because it's built on. I got themes that I built around each month that people will be able to track. I got a topic pick that relates to the theme. I looked at the scripture and asked myself to hear and prayed to God that I would hear the argument made by the original writer, and I made that my my sermon focus. And then I asked myself, what keeps people from getting? for me from getting it. And I wrote my sermon to overcome those hurdles. And now I got my punch line, and as a manuscript preacher, I'm gonna get over the hurdles <coughs> because I'm gonna address that in a way that accesses people. I'm gonna access their soul. I'm not gonna talk over them or talk more over them. I know that in these moments I'm gonna pause, put my finger on the manuscript, and say that line. Maybe look down and say that line again in a way that underlines. And people, you know, I'll do it sometimes in church. I'll actually, I'll say a line. Here's one. Uh, Grow love first now on purpose. You don't even know what that line means right now. But don't bother. Would you repeat? Grow love first now on purpose. Say it again. Grow love first now on purpose. Uh, that has to do with a very serious part of my September series. Because it was important, even though it's kind of hard to hear out of context, it was important. I'll actually not only me say this, I'll have them say it. So we get after church, people walk up to me, and they're handshaking my hand, saying, Hey, Rob, grow up on the first day of <laughs> That's what I'm talking about. So don't be shy to find your great mind. It doesn't have to be famous. It have to be four score and seven years ago. If it's relevant to your message and speaks that core argument of the text, make it a big deal for manuscript preachers. So the guy that came up to me after we were on track and said that he was a little bit old, he said to me, what he said to me, you know, sometimes you repeat yourself. <laughs> <laughs> so that's a good thing. Yeah. <laughs> and this is the struggle, right? We have a sweet friend, good man. Every once in a while, I'll have him preach in Reading because uh, he's real close. And uh, the hard thing of that is Reading's three services. And I'm telling you what, that's draining. That is so draining. His first sermon is always crystal clear, his second sermon is less clear. And by the evening, it's, it's hard to, because it becomes repetitive. But it's repetitive in not a strong sense, but the weak sense. I don't know if you know the word paraphrasis. And Bible scholars say that the book of John uses paraphrasis. Paraphrasis is sort of like paraphrasing. It's, um, okay, I heard this line. It's a really good line. It's um, um, be everything that you can possibly discover in yourself. Be, be the one you really are meant to be. Be, a, uh, be the person you, you know, well, I'm trying to quote be all you can be, but I, don't, I can't remember the line. So I just do 20 versions of it. Well, if you've read the Gospel of John once or twice, it's probably pretty enthusiastic, enthusiastic, but if you read it 20 or 50 times, it starts to get really redundant, and it really helps to know he's using paraphrases. He's trying to capture a line that he's, he doesn't have specifically, so he's using everything that he can to try to get you the sense of it. So read it as parallel lines. Parallel, parallel. Okay, I think the point he's trying to make is this, and, and so, so. Uh, but anyway, you don't want to be redundant to the point of pathetic, right? But we've all done it. Uh, but at the same time, if you can find a way to catch it that grips, and, 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 
for us, people know that was the theme for the month, wasn't it? Yeah. So Grow Love for Scow on Purpose was the theme for the month. And uh, still can't get grow. Yeah. And I actually did it for the first week. Grow. You know, second week was Grow Love First. Well, then I had the crowd say it. The third week, I had Grow Love First Now. And so each week, they were like, I'm, 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 oh, yeah. I'm, I'm, okay. So that's a, a theme line. Rather than just the kind of the two most simple concepts, there you can be certainly all of us can be. That's the thing. You got to weigh, find a weight to you. The weight to you repeats a little bit. The, the less weighty, be careful. Should not be hit too much. 